when people say sanctuary, you know, again, it's a very, it's not a modern concept. It's absolutely, if you are a thief being pursued by the hue and cry, if you can dodge through the marketplace, run up the steps of the church, get to the altar, put your hands on the altar, you claim sanctuary and you're not, nobody can arrest you in church, you're safe in church. That's great. Of course, it means you can't come out of church. And as Elizabeth Woodville says, that she had always thought that you then had to eat the bread of the mass and drink the wine, you couldn't get anything else. What she actually does is she, she lives in a, in a crypt, in a few rooms under the main building of the church. And the people of London bring her food to the sanctuary door and her servants come and go. But she herself cannot leave and nobody can come in and arrest her. What's terrible about her husband's history as King of England is that at the end of the Battle of Tewkesbury, which is the last battle that he has to fight, the Lancastrian gentry lords run into Tewkesbury Abbey and claim sanctuary. And he and Richard and Hastings and probably Anthony Rivers, everyone who was there that day, drag them out, take them to the marketplace and execute them. They break sanctuary. Therefore, how can Elizabeth really be safe? <laughs> What really mattered to me uh, to, to look at the second period that they're in sanctuary was to, two things. One was to really emphasize the fact that in the first period in sanctuary, Elizabeth has a handsome young husband who is going to come back to England and have a go at reclaiming the throne, and who knows whether he'll manage it or not. But she's got everything to play for, in a way. She is in sanctuary, but the king on the throne is Henry VI, who's not going to break sanctuary. He's a very saintly man. He's not going to come in with a drawn sword and kill them. So she's in a position of, she's still in the game, she's still a player. When she goes into sanctuary the second time after the death of her husband, she's a widow again. She's lost her, her son and heir. She's got her younger son Richard with her. She's got her daughters with her. But the chances of it all coming out all right are much diminished. And as she is in there, the uncertain world of a country at war again starts to kind of unravel under her feet. She becomes less and less certain of whether she can trust Richard, or whether she has to ha have a rebellion against him, where her allies are, who she can summon. And of course she's cut off because she's put herself in sanctuary. At this is the time that her daughter, the Princess Elizabeth, is coming into womanhood and having seen her mother as this glamorous, all-powerful, incredibly beautiful queen of a highly glamorous, powerful court, sees her as a woman who is not only in trouble but doesn't know what to do. And I think the power really starts to, in a sense, kind of rasp between those two, that you've got a girl coming into her womanhood with her own ambitions and hopes, and you've got the, the mother becoming older, knowing that she's lost her husband, not sure of how she's going to manage the world. Elizabeth Shaw's commitment to Edward actually survived beyond his death so that when Elizabeth Woodville was in sanctuary and really one would assume in danger of execution or murder in sanctuary, um, Elizabeth Shaw goes to her and partly that's because she remains faithful to the king and therefore the king's family. Certainly the king's sons would have been important to her. But she's also by then in the protection of Sir William Hastings, the king's great friend. And he uses her as a go-between to reassure Elizabeth that Richard III won't take the throne, that it will come out all right and that the boy prince will be crowned. So it's a, she's a very important go-between in a conspiracy which you would have thought would have been successful. Mm -hmm.